Genau, richtig. <lacht> Dienstag ist ja mein Lieblingstag. Yeah. Okay, now we're gonna switch into English, um, yeah. because we have a lot of wonderful international guests here as well. Um, a very, very warm welcome to our Loop Faces episode number eight. It's really wow. episodes. Yeah, it's amazing. It's episodes because the time we're living in, what we are experiencing at the moment is yeah, un unheard of, um, overwhelming for all of us. And I'm very proud to have you in our Loop Faces talk today um, because we are also going to talk about the future. Um, we don't have a crystal ball. We don't know what's going to happen. I mean, we are taking obviously the here and now, but a lot of experience that we are taking along. So it's a great pleasure to have you. Um, welcome everybody out there that you are coming in at the moment. Thank you for your loyalty. Um, we, a lot of you have been in the talk um, with us every single time or listening to the talk afterwards if you guys couldn't make it. So um, I'm very happy for those who are new and don't know me. My name is Astrid. I am the, uh, with my husband together, the founder and owner of Lobster Experience in Loop. We founded the company 13 years ago and we are specialized in the luxury industry for the German speaking markets mainly and Central Eastern European. Um, we have been doing loop phases since April. We decided to come out of the dark when we were all still kind of paralyzed, not knowing what's going to happen. Uh, but meanwhile, this is a format that um, gives people, I hope, ho I, that gives people hope. We want to be positive. We want to take this rough journey with you. We want to share stories, you know, so that you guys are not alone out there. This is really very, very important to know. And so I'm happy to have this amazing crowd here. So let me introduce um, who is with me today. I would like to start with Kevin. Kevin is in Berlin at the moment. At a no. You have a very nice living room. <laughs> Looks beautiful. <laughs> so Kevin, we know it. <laughs> <laughs> we know each other a lo long, long, long years, a uh, long time. Um, you've you've had a lot of very great steps in your career. The last one before you joined the company now was the Kempinski Adlon in Berlin. Um, in 2016, you took over 1218 as a managing director. Um, that is, time is flying. When we saw each other at that time, you had seven people on board. Now it's 70, I think, seven zero. Well, in total, yeah. The, the office here in Berlin is, uh, is 14. Exactly. Yeah. Very cool. So you are an extremely experienced person, obviously, in the luxury segment. You have six hotels in operation, two under construction. One is very famous, Seven Pines Kempinski in Ibiza. Um, or or uh, one I love personally, Schloss Roxburg in Scotland with only 20 rooms. Um, for amazing now. <laughs> for now, amazing for incentives. And you have uh, two under construction. The next Seven Pines is going to come in Sardinia next mm -hmm. year, just to name a few. So very welcome, Kevin. I'm Thank happy you. you're on board Thank with you. us. I would like to continue with Markus in pink. <clears throat> <laughs> Markus. <laughs> yeah, Markus is the expert of mice in the German-speaking co uh, countries. You can really say it's his focus. He does nothing else um, uh, than that um, and has all has a great expertise, this company is called Maximize. And what you really do is you bring providers and buyers together, um, also in the luxury segment very much. Um, just since 2014, you founded your own company, so you're an entrepreneur as well, and you have worked for great properties or have, are still working for like Brenner's Park, Jumeirah, Dice Cove, Disneyland Paris, I think was a big, big one for you as well. Um, and you do different things for, for these wonderful colleagues out there um, with uh, events, but also fam trips, etc. So we're going to learn more about that. Happy to have this expert on board. Um, you know, Hi everybody, and thanks, Astrid, for the invitation. Thank you. Pleasure. Um, there are not a lot of very good mice pros out there when it comes to providing services to mice agencies and to suppliers. It's a very rare species, <laughs> to be honest. So I'm happy to have you here. Götze, my, my dear Götze, she, uh, Götze, hello. Actually, she is a little bit cheating because she's in Corinthia at the moment in Austria on holiday uh, and you're at the Weissensee, which is beautiful, but you're actually running the show and the, you're the face of the Anders in Vienna. 
um, 25 years of experience in the luxury industry, lots of years with Hyatt, um, and now you're responsible for this beautiful Altendas in Vienna um, for business development, quality management, position, positioning, HR, uh, of 250 team members amongst many other things. Uh, we met actually last year when we were planning Loop um, in Vienna and um, uh, I, we were amazed with your property because it was just so perfect for our concept with our loops because you have 2,200 square meters of conference space, 700 square meters of ballroom and the perfect size with 330 rooms for all our loopers. So we fell in love. It's a free, it's a really funky hotel. Um, and so that's it. But we're going to talk about it obviously later. Yeah, and last but not least, I'm really super proud to have you here, Ingo. Um, hello. <laughs> hello. Also coming in from home, which is great. Yes. <laughs> so Ingo uh, runs the show at Marbet. Uh, for, who, for those who don't know this company, it's ranked among the top 10 agencies for live communication in Germany. And um, actually, Ingo is... Um, has started his career in the 19th with Club Med. At that time when you were studying um, and um, also working for Club Med, you started to get into the business of incentives um, by uh, organizing events for German clients, for French clients um, and companies. So that's how you got started. And 24 years ago, that's amazing, you founded Marbet together with Bettina Wirth, if I am correctly. Yeah. Bettina Wirt founded Marbet. I was joining <laughs> afterwards, but uh, yeah, since then I'm, I'm with them. Super, yeah. fantastic. So 24 years ago, you started with seven people. Now you are 140 employees, amazing yeah. company. Your core competence lies at corporate events, um, celebrations of any kind, exhibit exhibitions, in incentive and travel. And it's very interesting <clears throat> because we're going to talk about it later. 70% of your business before Corona was live communication, 70 and 60% um, is, is out of the luxury industry business. So amazing potential there. Um, and um, so just to name a few clients, Mercedes, Audi, Siemens, Roche, Vodafone, et cetera. Yeah, and 50% of, of your business was in Germany and 50% was outside of Germany yeah. um, between Europe and long haul. I think it's so sad if I say was, but at the moment- It, this it will come back. Yes, exactly. Welcome back. So before I start, um, we, we start going into a very interesting discussion about the future of incentives, of emotions, of online um, events, etc. I would love to ask in the round, um, we all have these special moments during Corona where we thought, wow, this is so cool. I really don't want to miss ever miss that again. I, this is something I um, I really enjoyed something really positive about this period. I mean, there was a lot of negative, I know, but something positive. I want to share with you, Götze, what was that for you? How, was, how did you have some positive moments? The positive moments, of course, it was a huge, huge shock to our system. But for me, the most positive moment was one day, just out of blue, I walked into a hotel because the hotel is closed. And I walked into the office and I saw six of our leaders, uh, leadership committee members. They were in the office just out of um, coincidence. Everybody was there. And it was so nice to see them in the office. Yeah. And of course, with the social distancing and everything. But we haven't discussed this. We didn't say, okay, we're having a meeting. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow, this is connection. This is a teamwork. This is team spirit. And um, also, you know, we love these uh, Zoom talks. We love to be connected on internet, but uh, nothing replaces human connection. And to see them was uh, the best moment for me. Absolutely. We love this and we miss it. What about you, Marcus? Um, I mean, as, as you just said, it, it, it is still and it has been a, quite a hard time, especially when um, running an own company, uh, being independent, I had a few, don't want to say like valleys where I went into, let's say dips. Uh, and always this, when, when I had those, um, the way back when getting new motivation, when for example, starting my, my podcasting and all these things, 
um, when, when the energy gets back and we, when you get out of this dip to a new high where you are motivated and to keep this level up, I really, really enjoyed that. And I'm looking for more of these moments. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's create these moments now in this one hour together. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Ingo, what about you? You know, I traveled a lot the last uh, 30 years and now to have a little bit time also to uh, have spent some time with the family, with the kids, that was a total uh, new um, feeling also for them uh, that they said, oh, you are home again, when will you travel next? And, and this, um, yeah, on the other hand, I miss very much traveling uh, and staying in some uh, nice hotels and the live moments, but for the family it was, it was a good time and, and also if you really have the time to think about, uh, to, to, to uh, sit back and say, okay, what is really important also for, for the business? When you are in a, in a very um, running year, you, you, you're running from one client to another and from one project to another. And so it was hard, but uh, the, uh, you have to a little bit time to really um, think back and, and um, decide what's best also for the company. Mm, that's true. Yeah, and Kevin, what about you? I'm also taking time for family and friends and definitely didn't miss any of the back and forth in one day, taking the plane in the morning, come back in the evening. Didn't miss that. Mm. And um, also to see how valuable it is to have an amazing team around you who are also very limited in terms of time, but being there whenever you need them. That was abs or is still absolutely amazing. Absolutely, yeah, for sure. But I think we all start missing the socializing a lot. And, yeah, the, um, buzz. We, the buzz is missing. The buzz, and we are so, everybody who is in this industry has a reason for it. I never want to go out of this industry. And, you know, it's just so emotional. And, and we just, I think we all love it. Now, um, that's the, we have a, a little bit of tragic story together because we were supposed to go to over, have a, our loop in Vienna on March 15 and five. Five days before the Chancellor of Austria, I'm Austrian, so I, I'm, um, um, I'm very neutral, let's say that way. He, he said no events over 100 people. Five days, there were some people already sitting in the plane from Australia and New Zealand, etc. But I know you from, um, we've been going through these three, four, five weeks before, day and night, we have sending, I can, I will remember the WhatsApp at three o'clock in the morning from you. Yeah. When we yeah. also canceled Vienna and we were like, oh my God, this is going to be terrible. But I have also experienced you and your team as amazing leaders in this crisis. You always had kept your sense of humor. You gave us hope. You gave us trust because you get really scared if you have such a big event. And you were there for us all the time. So thank you again for that. It's not taken for granted. So I got to, you have a very funky hotel. I think the Anders as a Hyatt brand, the first one in German speaking markets. Um, how did you handle the entire situation? Um, and what are the steps you're taking to recover and get out of this now? What is your mm -hmm. expertise or your wisdom you can share with us? Yeah, to be honest, uh, Astrid, we don't have any expertise because we never lived anything like this before. But luckily, of course, in Hyatt, we have a length of uh, experience with our leaders and our uh, company. So, of course, we get a lot of help. But I must say, we were, uh, as much as uh, all of us, we were so scared at the beginning. So, when we were handling the first uh, cancellations or postponements, as you remember, when we were waiting for the signature and our event, uh, it was highly volatile, very anxious, uh, very scary, I must say. And for us also, it wasn't easy because we opened the hotel in May 2019 and it was only 10 months after. Yeah. So we are uh, still in the ramp up period. And uh, this, was, this was a shock to our system. But uh, I think the best part of it is, um, as a brand, Andas uh, of Hyatt is, uh, as you say, very creative, cool, hip. So that, that was in our DNA, I believe. And we just thought, okay, let's just take it with a cool head. And uh, what I and my team basically uh, put in focus is, this is a big investment. It's a 300 room hotel, uh, rental piano building and 2,200 2, square meter meeting area. So it's done for mice. It's for conferences, for meetings. 
And uh, it's not a short term investment. It's a huge investment for long term. And once we got this in our head, okay, uh, yes, there is this uh, Corona, but we have to build our long term relationships. We have to instill confidence uh, in our partners and we have to go through this together. Um, so yeah, once you think about this uh, size of the investment, again, uh, you feel, okay, yes, uh, this cannot uh, stop everything. We have to come out of this. And uh, this is a shorter period. So this was our uh, vision mm. to start with. And obviously to see our partners as uh, good team players together with us. And um, to have a long-term uh, strategy and long-term vision. Um, after that, of course, my team has asked me, which is uh, the most difficult question. So they said, boss, so are you telling us that we have to have another opening within one year? Yeah. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> that's, that's what we will have. So uh, this is what we are uh, waiting for. But luckily, we had all of our checks, all of our action points. And then now, with the help of uh, our head office, of course, with our high guidelines, uh, we set up a committee and we have this um, like global care and commitment uh, committee. So we get a long checklist, emails, and uh, updates, of course, uh, every day about the virus, about uh, you know, professional advice and what to do. And uh, another big, big, big advantage for us is it's, it's a new hotel, so everything is state-of-art technology. So contactless services are very possible. Uh, from the uh, you know, door locks, you can open your uh, room uh, without a key now with mm -hmm. your mobile phone. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and um, internet services, the, the in-room uh, orders or uh, menus and everything can be touchless. So this was a big thing for us, uh, which maybe for all the hotels, it is not so poss possible now because you have to invest a lot in this technology, which we already have. Um, so that's a positive sign. And um, also by Hyatt, we had um, some regulations that every hotel has to have a hygiene and well-being specialist now. Uh, that's a special trained person and um, she is on board and she already started to make the checklist so we feel confident that uh, we are ready but uh, again of course it all depends on our guests as well people would like to feel confident people would like to trust but they don't want to be in a hospital environment mm. Uh, like we do in all the luxury business, the housekeeping and all of our services actually are invisible and uh, unobtrusive. Mm -hmm. So all these hygiene uh, regulations also, we will try to keep it as much as possible unobtrusive to our guests while they are, of course, the, uh, yeah. the priority. But uh, we want to keep it in a luxurious, casual luxurious way that it doesn't bother people. Yeah, no, I understand. Mm -hmm. Vision for the future. Absolutely. Yeah, I've never thought about this um, high tech that this will be such an advantage now. Um, I've never really thought about it, but that's very, very true. Ingo, talking about canceling events. I really don't want to be in your shoes as either. No. Um, I think you had 70 events on the books mm -hmm. planned ahead for the next couple of months when this happened. Uh, yeah. So what's the situation at your at Marbet and how, what are your expectations for the future now? How are you going to go through mm -hmm. this? What's the status? Would be really interesting to know. Yes, we are part of the Wood Group with over 400 companies in the Wood Group in 80 countries and nearly 80,000 employees. We are organizing around 150 um, uh, events for the Wood Group and the other 150 events in a normal year for external clients, as you said. So around to 300 uh, projects. But um, uh, this was uh, not a normal year. We had a great start in, in 2020. We had a lot of uh, very big projects, like, as you mentioned, around 70 for the, for the first uh, half year. And the first one we had to cancel was a very high profile incentive trip to Bali in the end of uh, February. And there it, it started um, the last or the next uh, four months. Uh, we did a lot of postponing, a lot of uh, talking to our clients. The good thing is that we nearly postponed everything. O only some were, were canceled. All the really, really big ones um, uh, are postponed to um, 2021. 
Um, in the last weeks, we also talked about the second half 2020. There was uh, some were cancelled, some smaller things, and this is a good sign, some smaller things we are doing live and all the other um, events and incentives we also postponed for 2021. So we think that uh, next year there will be um, a good year for us. Definitely, at, if everything uh, went well with, uh, with the, um, the health situation, you know, this is, this is very important that we have there um, the right situation. The problem is that the clients are still careful with, uh, with the situation is still unsure and they are not uh, really traveling, not only because of COVID-19, also because of the economic crisis. Uh, so we are doing at the moment a lot of virtual conferences, but I'm really sure when the feeling of security is coming back and the economy is rising again, um, they will travel again. Nothing is the same than life and it's, 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 it's very special. Um, in the future, I think there will be some virtual or hybrid events that will be a mix, but also some live events again. And the live events, they have, have to change a little bit because all the, the content is already in the virtual events. And so um, we have to deliver really some special moments for the live events. And there we need all the hotels, the DMCs and the partner to create, create for our clients really special moments and wow effects. That is very important. Um, then incentives will come back even more than before because all the, the normal conference you can do um, on a digital basis. And at the moment also our travel agency, we see that the, the business is coming back more and more. And um, yeah, um, I'm pretty sure also in attending on, on, on uh, fairs, like we are doing a, a hotel fair um, ourselves, but we are sending um, our people, our employees to ITB, IMAX or EIBTM. But the smaller fairs for us getting more and more important because it's more focused on the, on the right products, uh, like the Loop, Astrid. And uh, I was one of the first ones attending in, in Frankfurt and I, I'm really happy to be there in November again. Wow, great. Thank you so much for your insight. Uh, seems like a tough one. Seven, uh, 70 cancelling 70 huge events over the last couple of weeks and months. Um, you're still smiling. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you're still positive. Kevin, you, you come from both sides. You, you, come, you have leisure, which is very, very important for your products, but also the my side. We would like to start with the leisure side um, because your properties are coming back nicely. Um, at the moment, which is really great and encouraging to hear. So um, tell us a little bit about the crisis. When it come, how did you handle this uh, situation now? And give us, if you please, share some best practices with us and, and what is your situation? Uh, try to make it short. Um, thank you, um, Astrid. And um, yeah, we are extremely... Um, positive and, and so, 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 so happy that the situation is develop, developing as it does. Of course, I mean, we have quite an advantage to have resource only except of one hotel in New York. Um, so obviously that helps. And most of these resources are in Germany or in Europe with a large amount of German travelers and also Europeans, which does help because the more international travel you have, obviously, right, uh, Götze, the more difficult it is this year because they are just not allowed to travel. Um, so for us, obviously, the crisis started like in March. We started to see mid end of March some cancellation. And obviously, that's where we got very serious about what should we do. And then um, as we had a quite serious incident in the company as well, that developed in a, in a now we do it even more situation, which obviously um, ended up being very successful. So we started a sort of a four phases concept going into the crisis communicating with our customers B2B, B2C in the crisis, because obviously there was nothing what we could do except of taking more and more um, cancellations on and our sales and event sales teams, they really try to keep everything as much as possible on the books, of course, not only for the cash flow, but also for the business itself, of course, which Ingo, uh, probably everyone can confirm that, that uh, they mastered it, our colleagues in Ibiza, in Flesensee, and 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 so on. I mean, they did an amazing job on that. 
And then um, as soon as we sort of knew when we were able to reopen again, that was in Zylt, 18th of uh, May, Mecklenburg Vorpommern, of Lesensee, um, 25th of, of May. So we, we started with a communication saying, we now know, dear customer, you're not gonna book, but we will offer you a voucher of maximum flexibility, on, but purchase it now, we give you an additional 20%, and you can book whenever you want throughout the season. So that gave us in that moment an unbelievable increase of cash, but also already some guests which, which confirmed sort of to come in the summer months. Um, and then as soon as we were open, we could see the, the uh, bookings coming in and that was absolutely breathtaking, still is. How much work, our reservations, I mean, they're like, okay, are we gonna do it? But they're doing it and it's, it's really fantastic. And customers are, I mean, we, Gerske said that before, they don't wanna come into a hospital. And that was something else we created within the, um, this crisis, we, we call it, or the marketing called it, stay safe, feel good um, campaign which was for all of our hotels, but exactly creating nice pictures saying, just be sure you will be safe with us, but you're not gonna be welcomed in a hospital scenario. And I think that helped a lot and gave our customers quite a an, an, an nice security for being, first of all, assured that they can stay with us and feel great and don't have to think about COVID-19 all day long because we sort of had a solution for, for, for every single a guest, but of course for our employees as well when they arrived. Mm -hmm. Yeah, last but not least, within that time, we opened a whole new resort uh, with 185 <laughs> apartments and restaurants and well, as far as coming. Um, that was also unbelievable. Where, where is that? Where was that? And that's in, in, in Waren, also Mecklenburg-Vorpommern. Okay. Directly between two lakes, 185 apartments, uh, where you can choose if you cater yourself or if you go to the restaurant or so it's perfect year to open this, I have to say, mm -hmm. and the numbers show it. So that's, what I, that's the message in the market. There's hope, there's amazing business. And so far it looks that we can even make up for the, let's say, two months we lost. Looks oh good. God, amazing. God, what are we brave people here? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. But there there yeah. went quite some work uh, was involved, I have to say. Yeah, thank you yeah. very much. Uh, yeah team. i mean yeah. um you you had a um, we're not gonna talk to about this really but uh, one of your founders passed away right during this time and this is amazing because he uh, i mean you you just you lose your one of your leaders and that made you stronger i think yeah. that really you know made you more stronger and you said now uh, now we have i'm gonna do it after all and you know i think i uh, make congratulations um um, really to that journey. I think it's a very, very promising. It was Mark, the only yes. we could prove that we are proud on where we are working. You so, can. Uh, yeah, exactly. Definitely, you can absolutely be very proud, you and your team. Markus, you are in between of all us. You're between the, the Ingo, you're between Götzde, Kevin, etc. You are bringing the people together, these wonderful um, properties and the, the MICE buyers. Um, so, um, you know, MICE stands for meetings, incentive, congresses and in, in events. And I think we have to break these four down more than ever and look into every single segment more detailed and even m with more diversification. So um, please give us your insights. Where do we stand and where are we going? What do you hear in the market and how can we move on? What, what's clever to do now? So, so um, I know the person with the crystal ball. Exactly. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let's have a look into the crystal ball. Um, I would love to. I would love to. And and, and uh, actually, I already do exactly what you were just explaining, Astrid, to connect the two worlds of of destinations, of hotels, uh, event planners from agencies and corporates. Uh, and I had a lot of chats with agencies, corporates, but also industry partners from DMCs or flight operators, where what what their actual status is. Um, and as Ingo already said. Uh, sure, everything is down for the moment, but there is light. And uh, um, we do see companies canceling or postponing their 2020 events to the end of the year, or they're going to 2021. Mm -hmm. um, agencies are actually handling more digital events uh, right now, and they do learn very fast, as we all do, I think, handling these virtual conferences and talks. 
Um, but there are also new leads coming for still for Q4 uh, and also on the EU wide scope. Uh, and there are requests for 2021 coming in too. So um, when talking, for example, to a flight operator, they said that actually their number of leads are 50% less than compared to last year. Um, but there are leads coming in, there are new leads coming in, looking at a flight time of six hours maximum uh, from German, uh, out, of, out of Germany, so to say. So why, and I would like to explain that also, why is, is my recovering so slow? Uh, in Germany, we do have um, a saying, maybe it's all, all, all around the globe as well, which says like the event industry is first in and last out. So we were the first one not uh, being allowed to handle, to host or to go to big events, and we will be the last ones uh, picking up speed again. So for me, there are like three reasons. On, on one, one thing is a company running an incentive or a meeting has to take care of the employees. That's why maybe they are actually uh, taking care of it. It's the same when you are in a family going on your travel, uh, but you do have, as a, for, for when, when running a, a company, you have to decide for more people you are involved into your, in, into your, all your staff. And then now what Ingo said as well, there's an economical situation and economical factor coming in there as too. So um, this is something what is really, really in, uh, affecting the industry right now. The second one is um, that a company don't want to be, let's say, the first mover where things can happen, where maybe the second uh, airport or not, I don't want to use the word lockdown, but maybe an airport is closed due to various reasons and you're not allowed to go out of your destination where you are or where you plan to travel. So this is very, very, very um, unsure for a lot of companies why they are maybe postponing to the end of 2021, uh, at the end of 2020 or 2021. Um, when, um, or, and, and, and the third thing is what Ingo mentioned as well as they are ha handling actually a lot of uh, digital events. Um, we are all, we are all now learning a lot how to broadcast live, how to use Zoom, how to use other tools to interact digitally during conferences. But we are also learning what this digital world cannot offer and cannot do. You cannot, in, you, you cannot digitalize an incentive, which was one of your uh, questions in your, in your teaser of this talk today. Uh, no, this is not possible. Um, MICE and the life event is about emotion. It's about building trust uh, and it's about business partnerships also as well. And this is not able to run successful online. So MICE will come back, definitely, but in a way it will be different to what we experienced in the past. So when we, when we look at, for example, meetings, um, I already, um, I'm based south, south of Munich. So within Bavaria, I do have a strong network of hoteliers, planners, and, and so on as well. And they are already ex uh, sharing their expertise that local business is coming back. So for all the hoteliers, uh, which are right now listening to us, uh, look at your, let's say, clients in a 150 kilometer radius, because they, these will be the first ones uh, bringing you smaller meetings uh, back to your hotels and destinations. Um, so this is what's happening here in Germany. I do get the same information from hotels in Berlin, from hotels in, uh, in, in Frankfurt and in Hamburg too. Um, mm -hmm. For international meetings, I think the number of participants will change. So let's say, for example, when on an international meeting in the past 150 people were attending, in the future, it will only be 150 will dial in or will be zoomed in and it will go on a hybrid, uh, hybrid format. So this digital influence, what we are experiencing right now everywhere, it will stay. It will maybe also somehow increase the quality of the meeting, but on the other side, it will decrease uh, the number of participants um, um, hotel-wise. Mm -hmm. Um, when looking at incentives, um, I think this is completely different to what we are experiencing at, at, at meetings. Uh, it's great to hear that Ingo, for example, that this incentive to Bali is still actual and is still being planned. Um, because within incentives, incentives are done by huge sales structures. 
So it's about the reward and the recognition of the sales team. And these these companies, they are organized by that and they only, I don't want to say like that, but they only do function like this. Is This is the the biggest reward next to, let's say, some some money they do on too, but it's about the the applause, being on a on a stage, getting the rewards and the recognition of the colleagues, and being highlighted during this incentive. And these incentives, they will be back, and they are not being changed that much. I would say maybe, um, as as said, I mean I'm based uh, in, in in Germany. I think that from the incentive situation, they will look on a domestic or let's say country nearby um, scheme in the in the in the near future but within 2021 and the leads to international to european destinations the leads do show this that these special type is going to be international uh, very soon too fantastic well thanks for this great insight yeah yes ingo could also be new formats like uh, new incentive formats like we are at the moment creating a thank you uh, event but this is more an incentive for the for the people for the companies to really thank their employees yeah that must be not like uh, before the the five days journey to uh, um, somewhere it could also be a one or two day event but more in, there's no no conference there's nothing it's only a pure motivation a pure thank you for the for the great work what they did mm -hmm. we also had this um exactly what you said ingo um like now even in june quite an, a nice uh, group i mean always what was allowed of course in terms of, of size um to thank their colleagues in staying with them during this corona period because uh, mm -hmm. they um were particularly from a certain area um, and, and we could see this now also for 15, 20 um, sizes of teams that they're requesting more and more, also starting from mid-August uh, for the third and fourth quarter, which is, which is nice. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, we, had, uh, we have, were celebrating our 13th birthday, uh, company mm -hmm. birthday last week. I mean, we were partying like never before i tell you it's just like you know we're still there we're still alive i think we need to be so appreciative of what we have especially i have to say living here in germany or uh, austria um i think we're very lucky with what we have here so i think um it's about this appreciation and i i think marcus you said something really important the first movers I think this is so important in the travel industry. Um, we need these role models that go out there and say, okay, look, we're traveling, we're doing it, we are here, because it's like, oh, it's like baby steps and it's going to get more and more and we need, maybe we, we need to we five here, we need to do an event together just to know to show people hey we can do it so um i think this first movers is an amazing it's so interesting time at the moment yeah. so uh, absolutely so that's the vienna is a is a great yeah marcus when i add no, it definitely is i mean i just had the experience um organizing a fun trip this weekend we went to okay. austria mm -hmm. uh, and as you all know within a fun trip you do combine the different um yeah, let's say parts of, of, of a typical incentive um, where we wanted to show the destination. We had uh, um, a beautiful hotel where we stayed and we asked uh, a DMC providing, uh, let's say, Corona-like uh, uh, activities. So everything was, was also in a, was a test how an incentive does feel like during this special times. And after now doing this, I can say that first, it is, it is a 100% incentive. There is no, no loss of, of, of anything what you typically, typically do okay. have during an incentive. It was 100% wow. Uh, we went by e-bikes uh, by, 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 by e to, the, to the Alps, climbed the hill. Uh, we went stand up paddling on a lake. So all these activities, what you do, what makes a destination special. They do work, they do function, even during these corona times. Um, what we experience as well is quite important, um, that, that within the different European countries where the people can, can come from, there are different rules and regulations during this particular time right now. And it's uh, very, very relevant to, to get the 
the rules and regulation um, understood by the, by, by the hotel staff and by the DMC and by the people, um, they need to know where the, the, this, or, or what the status of the guests are. And not these are and, and, and it's not about like okay these are the rules and regulations what we do here in our country, it's more about okay this is your status where you are in your country, um, we we know this uh, we, we 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 handle it in exactly your way you 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 are feeling well, but here and there it is maybe a little different so yeah. um, it's a question of words and uh, communication. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Wait, but I, then next one, uh, Kevin, we'll come back to you. Just one good step. I, I, because talking about best practices, etc. I just think it's funny because um, I can't read the name who wrote. I just came back from a yachting trip in Greece. If you need me as a role model. You are in Austria on holiday at the moment. So, but Vienna is also an amazing destination. Obviously, you guys are very dependent on the American climate clients um, and other clients that cannot travel and we don't know when they will be traveling. So um, how is, do you see the situation in Austria or in Vienna and what um, are you predicting levels? Are you looking for new business? I mean, this year, can you mm -hmm. say it's over and out and what is... Oh. No, no, it's good. Um, actually, um, as uh, it, it was happening in March, as we were... Uh, experiencing it together, we, we thought it was a bit too early what the government uh, has announced and they stopped all these big meetings and it was beginning of March. But now it's all proving to be uh, right for us. So uh, Austria is open again. And since 15th of May, actually, step by step, everything started to go back to normality. Uh, saying normality, of course, not without caution, but uh, to, towards normality. And every two weeks, there has been uh, new steps to make it more regular and to make it more um, comfortable for people. So as Marcus was saying, now I'm also in the regions in Carinthia of Austria. And in these uh, especially beautiful uh, natural sides of the country, you don't even uh, feel it. Of course, again, uh, precautions are there. But um, yeah, it, it's just a holiday feeling. Vienna is a little bit different. In Vienna, what we are experiencing right now is, from my part, M started slowly the meetings, and uh, the rest is on ice. Uh, so, uh, end of June, we started to have small meetings. Uh, as Ingo was also saying, people would like to bring their teams together, and then they would like to have thank you events or they would like to have a strategy meeting for uh, their next steps. Uh, so this uh, domestic meeting started immediately. Uh, and now we see for the rest of the year, um, the regional, the EU, the, especially the DAH region is uh, very active and they continue with their bookings and planning. Obviously, uh, the international business will take time because of the flights, because of travel regulations and all that, we understand. But um, even for the uh, last quarter of the year, obviously, again, it's not going to be the same as we planned. It's not nothing to be uh, as we budgeted. Uh, but there is life uh, and uh, nothing has stopped with mm -hmm. small things and incentives, yes. But of course, the conferences and events will uh, come a little bit later. Absolutely. We are coming your, in April. For your yeah. city like Vienna or Venice, all these major cities, I mean, it's, it's such an incredible year to come. Mm -hmm. Also, Berlin, I see this because there is not these huge queues and cruises and cruises and cruises mm -hmm. overflowing the cities. I mean, this is actually the year to travel within Europe. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Ingo, I'm really curious because I'm not so much into this and you have mentioned also in our conversations before that you, as you are number one, you are conductor of all means of communications has all, have always been, but now you have to do the, 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 tech, uh, the, the online meetings, the digital concepts because you have no other choice. How does that work? Were you prepared for that already or did you have to uh, invent this now and how are you coping with the situation? The good thing is we already worked on digital concepts, yes, last year with mm -hmm. some of the clients. Siemens was one of the clients who demanded that. 
but not with the same focus than this year. And um, at the beginning of the year, some people came back who worked before um, by Margaret some years ago, and they're both digital experts. And um, there is not one concept. We, we see this and everybody's talking about virtual events and what they are doing. Um, it's um, a big variety of things out there in the market and the needs from every client is so different and that we nearly customize all services from a conference or product presentation or digital press conference is all totally different. And what the client wants, demand is also very different. So consulting is very important. And it's very important, the same then in events and, and incentives, you have to, be, you have to have qualified experts. Some, we are getting them there, we are, we are giving them education, but the, um, some are staying on the event side. They are more in, in um, short work time now because the live events are not uh, um, running, but the other ones are really specialized on the, on the virtual events. But the virtual events are more content-driven themes. Um, I think it's not the same impact, it's more business. And as I said before, um, there will be the same um, uh, virtual in the future, but also live again. And, and then live, uh, we have the slogan, moments that inspire. And I, I think this is very important for us for the future. And uh, everybody forgets a little bit also a second point. Um, the second point is, sustainable for the future because um, uh, we have to really have sustainable products and services and not like we have it today we are since eight years sustainable company and things like that we are okay but we can do a lot better and and the demand um, will rise enormously in the in the next year so we have to be um, really focused on that we have to be pre prepared for that Everybody, the, the, the suppliers and the agencies, uh, there will be a big demand of sustainable products in the future. Yeah, absolutely. So very, very well said. And this shouldn't be forgotten. Actually, it's an opportunity and a chance now to, to get this um, into the systems even more. Kevin, what about you guys, about the mice? Um, what is your situation offline, online? Um, how do you see this for your products and your expertise? Yeah, it's, it's really good what, what uh, Engel just said. It's going to be a mix between digital and live. I think um, because many companies are obviously international and international is impossible at the moment. So I think the smaller groups we see, the more upscale teams, uh, they're going to be like in smaller groups. And then obviously they will be able to also get their uh, colleagues over in a digital uh, environment. But of course, that has a limit of between five to 10 people because more it's just impossible to do it right mm -hmm. um, and everything else is domestic but that's what we saw already the, the last few years in Germany we quite have some requests for this year but I think that's everywhere where a company is safe to maybe take a car or, or a train uh, mm -hmm. to be sustainable <laughs> and uh, everywhere where people need to take a flight it's more very much more on the individual base but then it's all happening for next year Right, absolutely. Okay, great. Um, a good po prospect, um, a great uh, summary. Um, Markus, uh, congresses and exhibitions, um, that's the big guys. Um, in the past, um, lots of money has been spent in huge booths and uh, bigger and bigger and bigger and more. Um, do you think these companies will spend in the future? I mean, you had mentioned incentives will become smaller, probably, etc. So what's going to happen with the likes of IT? IBTM, um, I mean, EIBTM is not so big, but um, so, and, and how in general corporate companies or travel trade shows, how do you see that? What's gonna, what's your crystal ball saying? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, in, in, in general, I think a lot of huge trade shows, it doesn't matter in which industry uh, they are, they are, they are focusing on. Um, a lot of these huge trade shows, they do have a problem of concept, which is not anymore um, attracting the right people on getting the right numbers. Uh, look at the um, at the at the CBIT is I think one of the best German examples. Uh, it, it has been 
for many, many years, one of the biggest shows all over Germany, one of the biggest within Europe. Um, and it's not working. It has been canceled in 2019 uh, and it will not be existing in the future. Um, and if, 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 if trade shows do not find the right mix of getting their target audience to the show and being on and being offline, um, finding new concept, concepts of being attractive, uh, it will happen the same for the CBIT, for the IFA in Berlin, uh, or maybe now with the relaunch with the I, uh, IAA, IAA, the automotive show, which went from Frankfurt to, to Munich and will happen uh, 2021, the first time here in Munich now. So, um, and, and, and the same is, 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 is for the international trade shows. Um, as an exhibitor, you always need to ask yourself, will my potential clients be there? Um, right now, I had a lot of exchanges with other, uh, with other uh, potential, let's say, exhibitors of these international trade shows. And they said, no, I'm not going to exhibit there because uh, my clients are not going there. So why should I, on the one side, spend that much money? On the other side, risk the health of my employee going there without uh, having um, a, a know of, of, uh, or an idea of a potential return of investment. And um, so that's a challenge for all these trade shows, uh, which is which is which is there. And on the other side, there are there are more focused formats. Um, you are running one of those. Um, I do have my actions on the markets here as well, which are focused, which are on a smaller um, amount of people, and which are more dedicated to to re return of investment than a huge trade show is. Where I mean, I was. I was starting within this, uh, within this industry where we still were making deals on these shows. We were there for signing contracts, for making decisions, uh, which is unfortunately not happening that much anymore. It's more like an exchange of business cards. And then also only a limited time that you got with someone without really finding um, a relation. And that's why I think Different, different opportunities, different actions on the markets can be much more focused than huge trade shows. And when they don't, when they don't, let's say, reinvent their concept. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. Um, very well said, very, very well said. Um, I think it's going to be a very exciting time. And um, I think, um, obviously, Smaller formats are going to be at least the future for the next year. Um, um, but also, I mean, because it's very personal, we want to be personal. I think you said something so right. It's where are our clients? And Ingo, you, I was talking with you the other day and you also said, you know, I will send my people, definitely, but I need the clients to be there. And if they're not there, it doesn't make any sense where it is. So um, I think that's going to be a very interesting thing to watch. A big big challenge for the exhibitors, for the exhibiting shows, um, for sure. Excellent, excellent insight. Hey guys, it's, um, it, the time is just simply flying. <laughs> um, um, I would like to, um, maybe I, I just, um, before I, I do the roundup, there's just on one really good question from Edith. Ingo, Marcus, what would you say to a DMC in Latin America, Africa and Asia, to DMCs in Latin America, Africa and Asia on the future of events and incidents in the coming year? Ingo, do you wanna do you wanna get into that? Um, yeah, I mean we need uh, partners, we need DMCs all over the world. Mm -hmm. uh, Latin America is um, at the moment not really demanding in our in our uh, by, by our clients. Asia uh, definitely will come back, um, but there it's it's um, there are different parts of it. South Africa for sure. I mean. It depends um, uh, really how it uh, develops. Uh, perhaps uh, in Europe, also the COVID-19 um, uh, is over, and in other parts of the world, not. We will we will see what's uh, what's going on. But for sure, we need also in the future our partners all over the world. Absolutely, I think the trade will uh, come come back. I mean, in Germany, the trade was always very important. We are probably the most um, old-fashioned company in the entire world when it comes to printing brochures and and tour operators and travel agents. But they will have more value, and I think as well. And the, the obviously our mice agencies and the DMCs. I think they will be needed more than ever for, for absolutely for sure. Um, yeah. And that's a good outcome because it's going to hold our business our, our 
business together, our communities, our network together. And I think we all need each other. So we should not forget that. And it's very cool and good that you said that as well. Before I wrap up, I also wanted to mention something because um, you've mentioned sustainability, Ingo. I think with all this crisis and trying to survive of all of us, we should also not forget the poorest people, the weakest people out there. And um, we have talked about it uh, before, but, um, and I think it's great you're not forgetting it because many people are so involved mm. with their own stuff. So sustainability, but also the poorest. You have uh, founded a, a corporation um, um, uh, as an ambassador, you're an ambassador of a cherry called Kinder Host Beats to support terminally, terminally ill children and fulfill their most desired wishes. And I think this um, oh. um, uh, has a lot of respect. You are fine. fine um, getting money for this and how are you handling it in, in the crisis are you getting support what are you doing um in these tough times to continue to help kids uh, children before they unfortunately leave us um here from the planet to make it much better for them but i i didn't found it it's a big organization mm -hmm. i'm only ambassador since um four years now mm -hmm. um, because there are a lot of famous people ambassador for the children uh, hospice in germany but um, as an ambassador i uh, came there through a client and friend of mine um, I'm organizing with my network sponsors and our clients. Really also, we, our clients are involved in that. I collect the money for the families, more than 100,000 euros the last um, uh, four years. But we are not only donating, that's very important for us. We want to be involved. We, uh, we are fulfilling the, the heart wishes of the, of the families. Of the, we are going into, and I personally go into the families, um, and we, uh, with um, uh, big wishes of the children, like a four days of forest in Serengeti Park here in Germany, or Horsho Appassionata in Munich, or a dolphin therapy um, in uh, the Caribbean. We have uh, organized this for next year, for April um, 21, with the whole family, because it's also very important to do something not only with the children, with the ill and uh, sick children, uh, we have to do something together with the family, with the, uh, with the brothers and sisters who are really going through a, through a hard time. And um, yeah, at the moment, it's, the, the crisis was for them extremely hard because um, the, the family carers who are no normally supporting the families who are in the families, they are the uh, COVID-19 target group number one because most of them, they are older. And, and also the, the children have a really bad immune system, so they are not allowed to let other people come and help them. And a lot of marketing budgets are cut down for 2020, but uh, we already did something this year and we, we will um, keep on working on that. For, for me, it's really uh, very, very important. Yeah, thank you so much. I think um, I think this is an amazing impulse for all of us, and um, because uh, we should not forget um, that other people are need help, even if we are counting our pennies ourselves. And I I, I think this is a I really wanted to end this uh, wonderful talk with you guys with a perspective, a 360 degree perspective for all of us. Um, um, I, I would say a really big, 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 very big thank you to all of you for being here. With an amazing talk i um, um i hope we all of you are as inspired as we are and thank you for for the audience and you know i forgot to toast in the beginning when we kicked this off <laughs> i forgot because i was so excited so hey dear lupas lupa dear community out there have a toast enjoy your day um i see you in two weeks at our next talk and Stay healthy and happy Cheers, and positive. Bye, guys. Cheers. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> hmm. Lovely. Kopieren. Ihr müsst es speichern. Ich weiß nicht, wie das geht.